What's going on? Welcome to the Matt Bernier Show. My name is Matt Bernier. You can follow me on Twitter at Bernier underscore Matt. This is the recap edition going back and taking a look at the three major Kentucky Derby preps run this weekend. We will take them east to west starting in New York with the Wood Memorial, then going to Kentucky for the Bluegrass down at Keeneland, and then wrapping things up on the west coast with the Santa Anita Derby out at Santa Anita Park. We'll also give you a little bit of a quick hit segment with the stakes montage. This week with the stakes montage, it's going to be the three major preps for for the three-year-old Phillies leading into the Kentucky Oaks, as well as the remaining grade one races. There are other graded stakes races that, strictly from a time standpoint, I'm not going to be able to touch on all of them. So we'll limit it to that, and then we'll wrap things up, as we always do, with the weekend's best as far as buyer speed figure performances are concerned. Uh, if you're new to this program, thank you for listening. You can watch it on video.drf.com or on YouTube. You can also listen to it on Spotify, SoundCloud, number of different spots, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, however you listen to this and take it in, please make sure that you subscribe. If you're over on YouTube, make sure the bell icon is lit up so you get everything that DRF TV has to offer. Rate and review, and you can follow me on Twitter at Bernier underscore Matt. You can also leave questions, comments, concerns, whatever else it may be. I want to make this thing as tight as possible, so let's dive right into it. The first race we will recap is the Wood Memorial from Aqueduct on Saturday. Mile and an eighth, three-year-old's main track. You can see the field of 11 signed on here. Post-time favorite was Tacitus for Bill Mott. He was the winner of the Tampa Bay Derby in his most recent start. That was his first start as a three-year-old. Had a pretty cushy trip in the grand scheme, but he was very impressive nonetheless. The question now was, would he be able to replicate it? Would any of the other horses step up and sort of take the initiative and, and push a horse like Tacitus and see if he could get it done? Well, we had a little bit of pinball action going on early, but ultimately relatively formful result, and Tacitus did prevail. Here's the stretch run of the wood. Here comes Tex and Tacitus, and the two of them are right together as they come to the eight pole. Long shot Math Wizard has run a big one. He's third to the outside. Tacitus on the outside. Tex along the rail. Tacitus and Tex locked in battle at the 16th pole. It's Tacitus in front. Tex second on the inside as they come down to the line. Heikal takes third late. It is Tacitus. In the Wood Memorial, Tex was Tacitus gets the job done as the five to two favorite over Tax. Finishes second at odds of five to one, and High Cal rallying from off the pace at odds of three to one. Finishes third, rounding out your trifecta. Let's take a look at Tacitus a little bit more. He is three of four lifetime. He is just over six hundred fifty thousand dollars in career earnings, owned and bred by Judmont Farms Incorporated in Kentucky. Trained by Bill Mott, ridden to victory by Jose Ortiz. You can see the pedigree at the bottom of the horse card. He's by Tappet out of a first defense mare named Close Hatches. So the pedigree is there in spades, and he is basically living up to expectation. Uh, Mom was a champion. We'll find out. You know, Tappet, obviously he's searching for that first Kentucky Derby winner. Perhaps Tacitus is going to be the first one. You take a look at the figures of this race. 97 buyer speed figure, 120 time adjusted or pace adjusted. Time form U.S. rating. Uh, without the pace, it's a 119. Tax earned a 95 buyer and a 121 time form U.S. rating. That is pace adjusted, 117 raw. All of the fractions, no surprise in this race, were color-coded red according to time form U.S. Uh, those fractions were 23 and 3, 46 and 4, 11 and 2 for three quarters. They stopped a mile and 37 and 4, and final time of 151 and 1 for a mile and an eighth. Um, let's start off at the beginning. This race was a little bit of bumper cars early on. Uh, you had Jovea from the outside basically just take a left-hand turn out of the gate. Um, a little bit of an irresponsible ride there. I believe Nick Juarez has been reprimanded. Uh, you can find that over on DRF.com. Uh, it led to a number of horses being pinballed and pinched back, most notably a horse like Final Jeopardy, who got the worst of it early on. But then a horse that got it early and then again going into the first turn was Outshine, uh, excuse me, Over Deliver, one of the two Pletchers in here. Uh, not very often you see Todd run last and second to last in a field of 11 in a final three-year-old prep. Uh, Over Deliver was just the, the unfortunate sort of recipient of some of those things. So you want to give him the benefit of the doubt. This is a total line out for him. Outshine did was affected going into the first turn by that extra sort of bouncing around. He was floated about seven paths wide. Uh, he's another one. This was a disappointing effort, but you might want to give him the benefit because of the issue going into the first turn. Tacitus was involved in a little bit of that as well, being pinched, sort of floated between horses. Not the cleanest of goes early on, but then when the pace took over, things kind of 
kind of sorted themselves out, where Tacitus and Tax were taking up what would appear to be, if you're going from tail to uh, front to tail, uh, basically a mid-pack position, although they were running third and fourth at the time. They were just so far behind those top two who were setting those fast fractions. Uh, Tacitus, after that little hiccup at the beginning, pretty comfortable trip all around. Uh, the same can be said for Tax. Tax is the first one to go for home uh, as opposed to Tacitus, but Tacitus did finish slightly faster, about a length if you want to use the fifth of a second sort of equation or comparison. Tacitus comes home in his final eighth of 1342. Tax comes home in 1362. Why are those numbers and fractions important? I've brought it up a number of times and other folks on Twitter have brought it up as well. Uh, final eighth of a mile can be a good sort of um, let's say a good jumping off point as to how will these horses fare with an extra eighth of a mile to finish in the Kentucky Derby. And when you look at it, I usually look at it and say, if you can get that final quarter sub 26 in the Derby, you're going to be in pretty good shape, especially if you have some tactical speed. If you're trying to come from 100 out of it with the final quarter in 25 and 4, 25 and 3, you're probably going to have too much to do. You'll pick up some pieces, but you're not necessarily as, as likely a win contender just because you have so much ground to make up. A horse like Tacitus has a little bit of versatility. He has some tactical speed. Doesn't have to come from way out of it, but he can rally when the pace is hot. Um, I liked, I have to be honest, I was a little bit skeptical. I thought he was the horse to beat, but at the price, I thought you had an opportunity to take a shot against him. And he acquitted himself quite nicely. From a numbers standpoint, he continues to stack up uh, favorably against his three-year-old competitors and his contemporaries. And I think you have to look at him and say... He is on the short list of contenders for the Kentucky Derby. Uh, I will say it for this race. I'll say it for the next two as well. Keep in mind the trend all the years that this Derby point system has been implemented. If you have not won one of the final preps leading into the Kentucky Derby, you have not been a true contender to win the Derby because all of the Derby winners with this point system being implemented, all of them won one of the final prep races across the country. So Tacitus, he checks that box if you're looking for that and you believe that trend will continue. Tax, I thought, ran a credible race, and to me, he's an honest racehorse. He's one that I wouldn't totally discount for a race like the Derby, but I will be using him underneath at the very least. I'm not going to make a pick just yet for the Kentucky Derby, but uh, there's a lot to go. We still have Arkansas to run next week, and there's plenty of time for these horses, whether it's workouts, whether it's whatever the case may be. A lot of things can happen between now and the first Saturday in May. Tax with the 121 time uh, pace adjusted time form rating, actually the fastest rating in the field. I think he's a nice horse, and again, I think he's honest. I, that's the thing that I like most about him. It feels like you're going to get a good effort from him no matter what. Um, he's one that I think you do need to consider at what will probably be a very, very fair and playable price in Kentucky, but he has punched his ticket. He is in the starting gate if they choose to go there, which, I mean, at this point, if you have the points, you're probably going to go. Uh, High Cal ran better than I thought he would, but again, another beneficiary of a big pace situation to run at. He finishes, gets his final eighth in 1306, which you would imagine is going to translate favorably but I went through Formulator and I looked at the incremental splits for each of the top three runners. And a horse like High Cal is fitting that sort of profile of what I described of, sure, if you finish in 26 or sub, but if you're coming from so far out of it, you're probably not looking at anything more than picking up some you know, minor pieces after passing tired horses. Those top two horses, though, they have enough early speed that I think they could position themselves where they might be able to finish well. Now, they do need to work on that because if you just, let's say you doubled up the final eights, they're both well over 26 into the 27 range, which is not ideal. But just for comparison's sake, when you look at the final eights for Tacitus, Tax, and High Cal, Tacitus comes home in 1342, Tax comes home in 1362, High Cal comes home in 1306. Compare that to their opening quarter miles. Tacitus 2464, Tax 2439, High Cal 2541. So considerably slower for High Cal, about eight lengths slower, uh, excuse me, four lengths slower than a horse like Tacitus. And oh, let's say right around five lengths, bordering six, uh, slower than a horse like Tax early on. There is your difference with those final eighths of a mile. A, a horse like High Cal, who went as slow as he did for that uh, that opening quarter, he should have a little bit more energy left for that final eighth as opposed to those top two runners who were a lot closer and going a lot faster early on. It's all about energy distribution and when is it used. Uh, High Cal, he'd be the kind of horse I'm still dubious. Um, I, I think with a with a slower pace situation, how much does that compromise him going on? We'll find out. 
rest of this field, uh, I think you want to look at a horse like Final Jeopardy and say he was pinched back and compromised early. This was his first time going two turns. I think you want to give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, Hoffa's union didn't necessarily pass the test. First time going against winners, first time graded stakes, first time stretching out to a mile and an eighth, uh, first time going out for Mark Cassie. He needs to prove and, and validate that 95 that he earned in his career debut. I think both Pletchers, you want to give a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. Certainly, you want to give a mulligan to over-deliver. Outshine, I was dubious going into this race. His early issue certainly compromised his chances, but a disappointing effort nonetheless. Uh, the top two horses, as far as pace is concerned, you want to look at Jovea, even with that little sort of a, a bad situation early on. Um, but also not that Brady. Not that Brady was up there forwardly placed, and he didn't totally pack it in. I think he's going to be better going a little bit shorter. Thought all around that was a pretty decent effort from him as well. Uh, I have no knocks about the top two horses in this race, even the top three. I'll include High Cal. I think going forward, Tacitus, he's... He has earned his right to be on the short list of contenders for the first Saturday in May. I like Tax. I think he's a very honest horse. And High Cal, he's been the beneficiary of two fast paces in each of his past two races. We'll find out if the situation presents itself the same way in Kentucky. Now, the problem for High Cal is he might be a little bit borderline in points. You can find the entire point system over on DRF.com. Take a look at that. Things will, again, continue to change as these next couple races go on, you're going to have the Arkansas Derby and the Lexington for minor points. But Tacitus, he deserves to be in the starting gate the first Saturday in May. He's done nothing wrong, and he's living up to the billing and the pedigree. A son of Tappa out of the champion mare close hatches. Tacitus is a dual graded stakes winner, and he is one of the contenders, the main contenders for the Kentucky Derby. He wins this year's Wood Memorial with a 97 buyer and a 120 pace adjusted time form U.S. rating. On to Keeneland for the Bluegrass. Let's take a look at that field. 14, a giant field of three-year-old signed on post-time. Favorite was Vacoma. Vacoma really has not run a bad race in his three, now four lifetime starts after the Bluegrass. Uh, he deserved to take some money in here. I was very dubious about how far he wanted to go. I thought maybe one turn was going to be what his real sort of forte was. And as these distances got longer... Didn't know that I loved his prospects about stretching out. I could have said the same for a number of horses in here. But guess what? A couple of the horses that I thought would excel going shorter, they ran 1-2 in here. Let's take a look at the stretch run of the Bluegrass. Chess Chief is fifth back toward the inside, coming toward the eighth pole. Vacoma has the lead out to two lengths now. Some like it. Hot Brown changes lanes to the outside second. Signalman is in third. Chess Chief is fourth. Win, win, win is fifth. Vacoma, the leader, past the 16th pole. He has the advantage out to five lengths. Back to some like it. Hot Brown Signalman, then win, win, win. It is Vacoma for Javier Castellano and trainer George Weaver. Vacoma provides another victory and enough points to get into the Kentucky Derby starting field. He gets the job done as the 7-5 to five favorite. Over Win Win Win, who runs second at odds of three to one, and Signalman runs third at odds of six to one. Let's take a look at Vacoma. He is now three of four lifetime. He's never been out of the money in four lifetime starts. Just under seven hundred ninety thousand dollars in career earnings, owned by R. A. Hill Stable and Gotsa Stables, trained by George Weaver, bred by Alpha Delta Stables LLC in Kentucky. Ridden to victory by Javier Castellano, and you can see the pedigree. He is by All World Stallion Candy Ride, out of a spite sound mare named Mona de Mama. 94 buyer speed figure, 119 pace adjusted, time form U.S. rating. The raw, pay, uh, the raw time form U.S. rating is a 115. Um, the interesting thing about Vacoma, he's not the prettiest of movers. That's been well documented. He's got that big old paddle out there. Um, but he's a good horse. He just shows up and runs. He goes out for a good trainer in George Weaver. Uh, he has Javier aboard. That's never a bad thing. And he was close to what I would consider time form U.S. didn't, color code one way or the other. I think that they were rather tepid when you look and see the chart because 23 and 1, 47 flat, 11 and 2 for three quarters, 37 and 2 for a mile. <clears throat> Excuse me. It doesn't look, it looks honest enough going a mile and an eighth. But when you look and see that Vacoma, Signalman, and some like at Hot Brown at the three quarter mark were first, second, and third, makes me wonder how fast this pace really could have been. Now, on the flip side, those were three of the choices in here, so perhaps it was just a formful event. Um, the horse coming out of this race, I like some like it Hot Brown. I think he should go back to either the synthetic or the turf. Uh, I would take a shot. He's going to be a bubble boy as far as the derby is concerned. I would prefer to see him on grass, but look, if he gets into the derby field, I'm not going to fault the connections there. Signalman, 
I just don't think he's really improving all that much. I think he continues to run comparable races. He has this newfound, I don't want to say newfound speed, but he is laying closer to the pace, which should be advantageous, but he was no match for Vacoma in a spot like this. I find it difficult to believe that all of a sudden, four weeks from now, he's going to be able to turn the tables on that horse. Uh, the horse that I am interested in out of this race is Win Win Win. Now, Win Win Win, I have gone on record a number of times saying I didn't think longer would be better. Perhaps he was a closing one run kind of one turn horse at a one turn mile or seven eighths of a mile. Uh, I also questioned his ability to get out of the gate. Now in this race, he earned an 88 buyer and a 111 pace adjusted and raw time form US rating. So the 111 for him is straightforward. On paper, that's slow uh, as far as a derby prospect is concerned. But there's more to the story with win, win, win here than I think meets the eye. And if you, unless you go back and watch the tape or you watched it live and you picked it up, I, I think there's there's more here for this horse. Uh, first, he broke cleanly, which is a positive. It's a step in the right direction. He doesn't seem to have a lot of a lot of oomph out of the gate, but at least he was clean this time, as opposed to breaking inward or breaking slowly. So I, that to me is a positive. We're trending in the right direction. When you look and see down the backside, he's very comfortable down to the inside, toward the rear, allowing things to kind of play out. When you look at the chart and see that there was no real running happening except for win 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 who was coming and making up ground, and this is the key point when you go back and watch the tape, rounding the far turn, Win 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 is beginning to find his stride and pick up his momentum, and he is forced to check pretty substantially. It, it, it wasn't an end-all, be-all, but boy, I, it certainly ended his chances of winning. And I wouldn't, have, it, I wouldn't have faulted him at all if he ended up running a, a decent fifth. Instead, he wheels out to the clear, and it looks like it takes him a minute to find his stride, but when a rad cracks him left-handed, he takes off. And he finishes full of run. Now, when you look at the final eights of a mile, I'm going to rattle off the top five finishers. And I'm going to skip over win, win, win for a moment. So I'm going to go one, three, four, five, and then back to two. Vacoma, 1345. Signalman, 1329. Some like it hot brown, 1359. Chess Chief, 1359. Win, win, win got his final eighth of a mile after being steadied on the far turn, losing his momentum, which on dirt is basically draw a line through it. No chance that you're going to be able to have any, any real run. He gets his final eighth of a mile in 1269. So for a horse that I've long been concerned about his ability to finish as the distance has got longer, um, he's making me look like an idiot here. Um, okay, so he didn't win the Tampa Bay Derby. He didn't win this race here. I, I've got to be honest with you. He finished nearly five lengths faster than the winner did and... It was a day or a race where no one was making up any ground. Now, perhaps, again, perhaps a product of a little bit inferior company behind them. But he's the only one making up any ground. He had a legitimate issue rounding the far turn. And he finishes four and a half, let's call it, lengths faster than the winner did. I, I All of a sudden, I'm looking at a horse like win, win, win. And pace and trip, it, it's always sort of the, the, the caveat you need to throw out there with the horse coming from off the pace especially with 19 other horses, mile and a quarter, a lot of things can happen. But all I'm saying is he is really quickly to me looking like a horse that, you know what, the numbers aren't going to look sexy. You're going to need to improve. But on the heels of this effort, I think the foundation is now there. And with the way that he finished, I, I you know, he may slip through the cracks a little bit, but I, I think there's reason to believe that had he not been stopped on the far turn, that he would have threatened to win this thing. He only lost by three and a half lengths, and he finished well below that sort of 13-second threshold. And again, if you want to sort of project going forward, another eighth of a mile, if you just want to say he's going to double up the 12.69, and I understand it's not that easy, but if you just want to use that as an example, let's say 12.7, I mean, you're, you're well below that 26-second that final quarter mile mark, and that could be a major thing he needs to be a little bit closer to the pace I think that could be a major concern for him but when I go through and I look and see it's not as though he was crawling early so let's go back to high cal and I recognize they're two different surfaces they play differently I get all that but if you just want to look and say from a fractional standpoint what a horse like win 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 is able to carve out quarterly as opposed to a horse like High Cal, particularly with the opening quarter. High Cal was well over 25 seconds. Win 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 was at 24.67. So he's not going that slow early on. It's just that the early pace, it, it was it was fair enough. Uh, a horse like Vacoma went 23.43. He, 
he had every right to slow down a little bit toward the end, but it's not as though they were blistering early on, in my opinion. Because in the Derby, they're probably going to go at least that fast. And then you're still going to need to navigate that extra eighth of a mile. But you look and see, win, win, win for that fourth quarter. Keep in mind, he was steady hard. 26-15 as opposed to Vacoma's 25-91. And Vacoma was in the clear and set down for the drive. I do wonder if if win, win, win all of a sudden. I, he may have won me over in this one race. Am I going to pick him? I don't know. We need to wait and see. A lot of things can happen now between now and, and four weeks from now. But I th- think there's reason to believe that he is better than what his numbers would suggest. And I've probably been wrong all along. That maybe the additional ground is not going to be a bugaboo for him. Maybe it's actually going to be a, a beneficial piece for him. Um, he won me over with this race. I think uh, the fact that he was able to overcome some adversity and still finish as well as he did, I like the effort from win-win-win quite a bit in here. As far as the rest of the field, um, I don't really have a heck of a lot to say. Dream Maker, I'm done. I don't know what you want to do with this horse now. Seems like if he's in behind horses, he just doesn't run. Uh, that's a problem. Maybe you, you experiment with an equipment change, you try something else, but, but whatever it is right now, it ain't working. Um, as far as the rest of the field goes, uh, it was pretty formful up at the top. You know, four of your five choices, they ran one, two, three, four. So I do with this what you will. And again, I, I think some like it hop around. I like him as a horse. I think a different surface is going to be beneficial for him, whether it's turf or synthetic. But uh, Vacoma, I'm not going to sit here and say anything bad about this horse. He continues to run well. Um, I do wonder still a little bit for him about an extra extra eighth of a mile, but he ran well enough here with the tactical ability um, that, you know what, I'm not going to argue with anyone that says he's a legitimate player for the Derby here in a few weeks, uh, but win, win, win. He's the one I'm most interested in coming out of the bluegrass. He finishes second behind Vacoma, but I think it was a promising enough effort. Vacoma does get the job done, though, with a 94 buyer speed figure winning the bluegrass and a 119 pace adjusted time form US rating. The raw number is a 115. Let's button up the three-year-old preps with the Santa Anita Derby, the shortest field of all the Derby preps. Let's head on out there, take a look at the field. Only six of them signed down. Post-time favorite was the two-year-old champion game winner. He was bet down to odds of one to two. He was not the only Baffert in the field, though. Roadster went out there with Mike Smith aboard, but you also had Instagram, who was going out to two turns for the first time. You had Nolo Contesto. Uh, you had a couple of intriguing alternatives if you wanted to go against the juvenile champ. Ultimately, the juvenile champ ran a big race. Not quite big enough. Roadster gets the job done. Here's the stretch run of the Santa Anita Derby. And he fights back. Instagram game winner. Roadster is finding his best stride in the center of the track, putting in a big effort. Game winner between horses. Instagram at the rail. And here's Roadster storming home. Roadster on the outside and game winner go on with it. Roadster so confidently handled. And Roadster gets up to win the Santa Anita Derby ultra impressively. Roadster gets it done at odds of 3-1 to one over game winner odds of one to two and instagram rounds out the try at odds of three to one let's take a look at roadster three of four lifetime never out of the money in four lifetime starts over seven hundred six thousand dollars in career earnings owned by speedway stable llc trained by bob baffert bred by stone farm in kentucky ridden to victory by mike smith and the pedigree he is by quality road out of a silver ghost mare named ghost dancing Interesting to look at these figures for this race. 98 buyer speed figure for Roadster as opposed to a 113 Timeform US rating for Timeform US. That is both the raw number as well as the pace adjusted number. Um, the reason I say it's interesting, I've brought up the 20 point differential between the two in the past. Um, if you tack 20 onto the buyer of 98, you're looking at a 118. It's a big number. You take 20 away from the 113. Down to a 93, not nearly as as impressive as a 98 is. And I know five points may not sound like much, and going a mile and a quarter, you know, speed figure is not the end-all be-all. But I do find it a little bit intriguing that there is a, a pretty legitimate discrepancy between the two figs as far as this race is concerned. Uh, game winner, 97 buyer, a 115 pace adjusted time form US rating, 112 overall. With a raw number, you look at the final eighths of a mile for both Roadster and game winner. Uh, Roadster comes home in 1277, game winner 1294. I wonder if part of that was because going into the far turn, Roadster seemed to lose, I don't want to say lose touch a little bit, but there was a little bit of gapping between he and those front horses, the front four that all just went for home. And Mike Smith, I think it was a great ride from him. He just waited, bought his time, then got into the horse. And boy, once he leveled off, he finished very, very well. I thought both of the top two ran pretty big races. Uh, they'll both be bound for Louisville. 
I, I think Roadster's a really nice horse. I think it took a little while to get him back. There were a number of things. You can read um, plenty of the articles written by uh, whether it's Jay Privman or Steve Anderson or Brad Free out in Southern California. They've got all those sorts of things cover, uh, covered, but Roadster had some quarter crack issues that he had to deal with. The weather, obviously, the ongoings out at Santa Anita. So things did not necessarily go as one would love, but... They got that N1X into him most recently, and then he comes back here, and he gets a grade one victory in the Santa Anita Derby. I think he's a primetime player for the Kentucky Derby, as well as game winner. But I'd be lying if I said I wasn't concerned a little bit that game winner hasn't... Has he improved? I know he's only run twice here as a three-year-old, but he was running these type of figures or comparable figures last year as a two-year-old. Um, I, I'm wondering, you know, has he, has he taken that necessary step from two to three in order to really continue to improve. It's still far too early to make a conclusive statement, but I, I think it is something to keep an eye on. Instagram, um, he, I just, he didn't run badly at all. I mean, he, he was not humbled and not embarrassed by these horses. He was only a little more than two lengths off of it. I just still feel like he's going to be better going short or going one turn. Uh, and Nolo Contesto, I thought he ran well. I still think he's going to be a nice horse going forward. Think he's going to need a little bit more time though. Perhaps he'll be that later developing kind of three-year-old. Let's get him into the summer, get some of those races under his belt. Maybe we can look at a race like the Travers down the road. But for the immediate time, I think he's a little bit overmatched, but I still have faith in him. I think he's going to be a nice horse. And the last two horses, they were both 66 to one or greater. They were both overmatched in here, perhaps shorter, perhaps different surfaces for each of them. But Roadster and Game Winner, they both finished one two. It's a Baffert Exacta. They're both on to Louisville for the Kentucky Derby. Roadster, I think it's a good effort, and I think the versatility that he has. I think there's a lot to like about this horse. 98 buyer, 113 pace adjusted and raw time form US ratings. That's something else to keep an eye on going forward. A little bit of a discrepancy between those two figs. We'll find out which one is a little bit closer when it's all said and done. Let's dive into the stakes montage here. Again, I'm only going to go over the three-year-old Philly preps as well as the remaining grade one races from across the country. There were a, a whole slew of of stakes races that we could have used, but just from a timing standpoint, I didn't want to go through all of them. I didn't want this thing to be two hours long. So we're going to go over those three-year-old preps for the Phillies. We'll also go over the grade ones, and I'll come back, get you some quick hits. So here we go. Stakes montage for this weekend. McKenzie square off in the big cap, and McKenzie comes right to him with a furlong left to go. Mongolian Groom is in third, followed by Prime Attraction. It's Gift Box and McKenzie in a showdown. McKenzie or Gift Box, nose and nose. Neither one giving an inch. McKenzie, Gift Box, Gift Box or McKenzie, Gift Box. Gift Box a nostril over McKenzie. This wax tries to pick them up from fourth. Lady Kate is in fifth. Close quarters in this battle for the lead momentarily off the turn. Out for a spin. And Restless Rider, they separate. Continue to go at it. Final 16th of the Central Bank Ashland. Out for a spin. Restless Rider second. Out for a spin. And Paco Lopez spring a World of trouble makes his move for the lead on the outside. Honor Up tries to dig in toward the rail. Scotter scramjets between those two and third, then Vino Rosso and Life in Shambles. World of Trouble and Manny Franco come down to the final 16th in front. Scotter scramjet is second. And then is Honor Up on the inside. World of Trouble's gonna do it. World of Trouble takes the carter over Scotter scramjet. And then it was Honor Up. Strike, and Bella Fina. Flor de la Mar cannot match strides with her, and Bella Fina opens up a length and a half. Now it's two. Flor de la Mar chasing yesterday. Bella Fina dazzling once again. And it will be Bella Fina. What a nice performance. A very easy victory in the Santa Anita Oaks by four and a half widening lengths. Flor de la Mar was second. Three to star and sultry back toward the inside. Spice Perfection coming after Amy's challenge. And these two now battling past the eighth pole. End of the final furlong of the Madison. And Spice Perfection has a narrow lead. Amy's challenge second. Gap of six back to late night powwow. And Amy's challenge is fighting back to the inside of Spice Perfection. Amy's challenge has not thrown in the towel. But Spice Perfection has her measure today. And wins it. Jumping now moves up alongside of her. They are nose to nose, and Always Shopping has taken the lead. Always Shopping to the front. Positive Spirit on the inside. Second Proud Emma's third, then off topic. An espresso shot on the outside. Always Shopping. Manny Franco shaking her up for another 16th. She's holding on to the lead, and Always Shopping wins the Gazelle. Positive Spirit was second off topic. 
Let's get you some quick hits, and we'll also recap the best as far as buyers are concerned. We'll get you out of here in no time. Sanity at Handicap, just a tremendous horse race between Giftbox and McKenzie. I was very, very concerned about the additional ground for both of them. They both seemed to handle it much uh, well within themselves, put it that way. They were much better than the rest of that field, and it checks that box. If that was a concern for you going forward, the mile and a quarter, they seem to handle it. No problem. Uh, gift box wins that photo. Again, just a great race from both of them. They both earned low 100 buyers. Uh, they've both got to be viewed as players for the older division going forward. Uh, the Carter, huge effort from World of Trouble, given the fact that it looked like there were some team tactics involved. Floated very, very wide. Should be said, though, that any horse coming from off of the pace was compromised because that pace was absolutely crawling out there. So World of Trouble, I'm not taking anything away from him. It was a giant effort because he was wide because, it, you know, you saw the race. Uh, but I think you do want to give the benefit of the doubt to those horses that do their best running late because they had no pace to run at that day. Uh, the Madison, a wicked finish between Spice Perfection and Amy's Challenge, throwing it down. Looks like one is going to go on. The other one digs in gamely, comes back. The other one re-rallies, comes back on the inside. Just a great finish all around. Uh, I think they're both quality fillies. I don't know that they are head and shoulders the best as far as the female sprinters are concerned. Uh, disappointing effort from Late Night Pow Wow. A couple other horses kind of uh, fell flat there, but uh, a nice race anyway from those two. We'll see ultimately how they fare going forward and where they each, uh, where everyone from that race ends up showing up. Uh, the Sanity to Oaks, uh, Bellafina never really got out of first gear, it didn't feel like. Gear down at the end, ears were pricked. I don't know. Uh, based on that, it's hard for me to argue with her being the best three-year-old filly, especially when we talk about the next two races. Um, she just, uh, you know, right now, Right now, I just don't know if there's anyone that's going to run with her. I think she's just that much better than everyone. And from a number standpoint, I suppose that is up for debate. But just visually what she's done so far, I, I don't really have much much desire to try to beat her in a race like the Kentucky Oaks. I know the mile on eight's going to be an unknown, but it'll be an unknown for a number of girls in there. Um, but I just, I, look, she sat this time around. She just looped up, cleared the field, went on with it. Um, I, again, I just unless someone just shows up and jumps up in a big, big way between now and then, I just I have a hard time envisioning myself making a big stand against Bellafina in the Kentucky Oaks. Uh, the Gazelle always shopping. She had a great trip, but she was the best in that race. That it was a nice effort. Uh, I'm not totally sure about the quality of that field, but I like the effort from Always Shopping. As far as the Ashland was concerned, you know, 52 to one shot wins the race. You got to be a little bit unsure what you saw there. Um, you know, I think Out for a Spin is a nice filly, but I just it's difficult for me to really make a make a a, a real sort of analysis of it because I, I her two races prior on sloppy sealed tracks far and away the ra races of her career the ones otherwise were very lackluster so where did this one come from did she all of a sudden just put it all together um, or was it a combination of jaywalk running terribly again and you have to wonder where we are now with her I don't know that I'd go on to the Kentucky Oaks with a filly like that her two races off the layoff have been terrible um, and I know there are a lot of people that'll be disappointed in Restless Rider when it looked like she just loomed up and she was just going to blow the doors off the field, and she couldn't even get the job done. Um, that was her first start since the end of November last year. I think she's going to move forward. She's run well at Churchill Downs. I think she's an interesting sort of alternative as we go forward. I think this is all part of the plan for Kenny McPeak. Uh, restless rider, I'd expect her to move forward in the Kentucky Oaks. So there you have it. Quick run through the three-year-old Philly preps as well as the rest of the grade ones that were run this past weekend. Let's take a look at the best as far as buyers are concerned for this past weekend. The three-year-old males on dirt roadster. The Santa Anita Derby winner, he earns a 98. Three-year-old Phillies on dirt, Bella Fina. She wins the Oaks, which we just spoke about, with an 89. Three-year-old males on grass, one bad boy, an 85, and a maiden special weight out at Santa Anita. Three-year-old Phillies on grass, the Mackham Bullet, an 84, in the Appalachian at Keeneland. Older males on dirt, the hardest way, a 103, and a non-winner is a two life, uh, non -winner is a two other than, excuse me, at Keeneland. Uh, the reason that he is the fastest in there is because the boys in the Santa Anita Handicap, they earned 102s. Older fillies and mares on dirt. Spice Perfection and Amy's Challenge. Very entertaining horse race. They are in the 96s in the Madison. The older males on grass. Impromis. Given his start and the way that he rallied and finished, boy, that was a big effort in the Shaker Town with a one-on-one -on -one buyer speed figure. He just goes and nips bound for nowhere. And the older fillies and mares on grass. Fasalika. What else is there to say? She's just rock solid. And she blew the doors off the field in the Royal Heroine with a 95 buyer out at Santa Anita. Someone from the east is going to need to go west. 
to unseat her as the queen of the throne. She is rock solid for Hollendorfer and company. Vasilika continues to roll along. There you have it. Weekend's best as far as buyer speed figure performances are concerned. Thank you if you've been watching. Thank you if you've been listening to this podcast. However you take it in, please subscribe, rate, and review. You can find it on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, video.drf.com, as well as Spotify. Questions, comments, concerns beneath the video player on YouTube or directly to me on Twitter at Bernie or underscore Matt. Again, you can leave anything you want. You agree, you disagree, you like the show, you don't like the show, whatever else it may be, just fire away. Let me know in either spot. I will be back with the preview edition at the end of this week, talking about more likely than not the Arkansas Derby, getting ready for the final round of preps for the Kentucky Derby. After this weekend, points are all going to be settled. And we'll have a better idea who the 20 horses will be running the first Saturday in May. Should be interesting to see. We'll find out if I'm probable can get the job done in the Arkansas Derby, or will it be a horse like Omaha Beach who continues to improve for Richard Mandela? We'll find out. Should be a good field down in Hot Springs on Saturday afternoon until we talk with the preview edition. Best of luck this week, however you play, whatever you play, wherever you play. This has been the recap edition of the Matt Bernier Show.